Good morning, good morning. Let me get this. Good morning, good morning, everybody. You're listening to WOOM 92.9 South Philadelphia Community Radio, giving you another edition. Um, and we can say it because we're off the clock. Yeah. Uh, the <laughs> 623 Lives Matter radio show. Uh, thanks, everybody, for, for tuning in. Everybody that's watching now and everybody that's going to watch later, um, we appreciate um everybody watching we appreciate everybody supporting us thanks everybody for taking um some flyers this morning and also everybody that bought some tickets we appreciate that i was at oregon avenue this morning beautiful beautiful reception um you know a lot of positivity uh, and that's what we're about you know we're about keeping everything positive making sure that our focus stays um, on the company and protecting our members which we have done um these two plus years so Bagby, it's been two plus years, uh, two years and four months. Uh, what are uh, what, what what are some of the things that you you you've seen in these two plus years that made you think you know made you think that man, you know uh, you know are we doing the right thing? Um, we should have went right instead of going left, you know. So these two plus years, what have you seen? The biggest thing I've seen is the change in the morale. Mm -hmm. The morale is so much different than what it used to be. Like, you have people, you, you talk to them, and they, they are engaged with what we're doing. We have these new committees. You have people being engaged with them. Mm -hmm. We have we had an event, the Madden Tournament. We had people come down to Union Hall who've been members for years and have never came down there before. But you put something out there for them, and they're engaged. You talk about the contract, things like that. They're engaged. The whole union thing is all about the members. If you lose the attention of the membership, then you lose the members. You, right. you lose the union. Right. So I think the biggest thing we've done was we've strengthened the, the, we've strengthened the union by engaging the membership. Right. Because it's not about us. No, it's not. I mean, we're, we're members just like everybody else. Mm -hmm. But it's not about us. It's about what we can do for the membership. Right. And I think we've done that. And it ain't like we're not doing it to try to gain votes. We're just doing us. This is what we usually do. As shop stores, we're the same way. We were the same. We fought the same way. We were the same way. Right. So th if it's in your heart, you're going to do the things that we're doing. Right. Right. And it's in our hearts. Yeah. Whatever's in your heart is going to come out one way or the other. Exactly. Right. Pressure. Pre and you know what? Pressure and... Uh, challenges will also make what's in your heart, make what's in you come out, you know, and I say that to say this. So when we first got elected, um, you know, we had to make some, some, some difficult decisions. Groundbreaking decisions. Groundbreaking decisions, right? And so a lot of people, and, I, and it's, it's going to be a, a kind of a long show, but we kind of want to walk you through some of the challenges that we faced and some of the decisions that we felt that we had to make, not based on politics, but based on the membership and what they needed. The, one of the very first decisions that I got a lot of criticism for, a lot of negativity for, was when we made um, Butch Kamak, Ron Kamak, um, a business agent. Well, Hooker, why would you do that? He ran against you guys. You know, well, no, 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 no. And even you was having some little bit of questions about when I first did it. He was like, man, I don't know. But we talked to the drivers at both buildings, because at the time he was a BA at both buildings, and they spoke very, very highly of come back. And I knew um, that Norm could not do all the driving centers by himself, because what we found out is that even though our local is 70% inside worker, the driver gets gets a, has a they have a lot of stuff to go through that gets them in trouble right and you need somebody to come from that more than just one ba to come from that that classification that knows the ins and out of that classification we never were drivers so we don't know the all the ins and out of 300 and some odd uh uh things that have to do you know and if they don't put their lunch in the board and stay at the, at a section too long and all this stuff that they can get jammed up on and plus, we wanted those drivers to have somebody that they can trust. Not saying they won't be able to trust us, but they've been driving with Kamak for over two decades or whatever the case may be. 
So we got some 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 kickback from that, and, and it was all about politics. And to me, you guys know this this job, even though the principal officer and president and whatever the case may be, are political positions. Mm -hmm. We did not get into this job for politics. We got into this job because we were tired of of where the union was going, our local was going. It was stagnant. There was no vision. There was no 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 life in it. And so we had to break that up, you know, and. Of course, I'm telling you, man, I was getting phone calls from all across the country. Oh, man, how could you do that? Uh, he didn't run with you guys. So what? It's about the members. Now ask those same people. Now yeah. ask them now. Uh, I actually took that a step further because when, that, when, that, when, that, when you first told me about that decision, you know, I got, I got the pushback. Like I said, for us, it was the first time us being in this position. Right. So... I didn't know how it actually worked about who gets what position of case be. Cause my thing is, I just want to start serving the membership. Mm -hmm. So it was the to me. Now I said it then. I'll say it now. That was the best decision that could have been made at that time. Not only just because he was a driver uh, at all them years, but he also brings he brings the experience. He brings the know-how. He brings the hard work. And, st and to be perfectly honest, he was essential to us yeah. going to panel. Yeah, that first case. So yeah. you got to think. Yeah. We, yeah. If it was a, 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 a hearing in the building, oh, we, we, we could have knocked it out the park. But going to panel is a whole different animal. A whole different animal. And if he wasn't there, we yeah. wouldn't have been prepared to take that case. You got to think. We took off of January 1st, 2020. Right. January 13th. We was in South so Carolina. Not even, not even two weeks into no. the job, and we, we have a, a a case that was already highly, you know, contentious because of who it was and who it involved mm -hmm. and how it impacted us and how, you know all all those kinds of things, and and we'll talk about that a little bit later about you know the first one hundred days and all the stuff that happened and you know making the moves we made to, to, to make sure that we stayed on course. Because a lot of people don't know, there were there were a lot of things going on internally, and uh, from the company, and then the pandemic happened. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. Yeah, but but getting back to Ron and that decision, um, in the beginning, people were like it, it, people were looking at it through the lens of politics. How could you do that? You know, he ran against you guys, and nah, 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 blah blah. Everybody knows that does not mean anything to me. I, I care nothing about politics. All I care about is serving the membership with the best people we possibly can, and we did that when we when we when we hired Ron Kamak to be the BA for the drivers and and the uh, feeder department. And 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 like I said before, ask those same people who were calling up. Oh man, how could you do that? You know, the, those calls don't happen anymore. Well, same thing with us when they said, yeah. yeah. But, but one of the biggest things I heard, we, we, we was going we to bankrupt the local. <laughs> right. We, <laughs> we was going to spend all the money. Spend all the money, bankrupt the local. And, I, and, I, and I'm glad you brought I want to talk about that, too. And there was a lot of talk about, you know, pay cuts and leasing of the vehicles. Why did we make that decision? And, and this is going to step on a few toes. It's going to be uncomfortable for some people. But this is, this is, this is, this is what you're going to get today. You're going to get the true uncut a version of, of why we made some of the decisions that we made because we was looking at the outcome down the road and not about what's going to happen tomorrow, but what's going to happen next month, next year, you know, next contract. So Hooker and Bagby, why did you guys take a pay cut? This, 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 this. So again, it's going to be uncomfortable for somebody, but we got to talk about it. There is a racial stereotype. Um, within the Teamsters, not just the Teamsters, but in America. The African-American men um, in positions of power, all they care about is money and cars. So what we had to do was take that, take that stereotype as much as possible away from um, the voting membership. Um, for an example, a lot of people don't know this. So back when the previous administration was in office, uh, we had um, a brother on there. Um, African American uh, brother named Izzy Gray, and they made him a BA during the last year, 
a year and a half, but somewhere but around year, that time. About a year and a half. And there were a lot of, of people talking about, man, how can they make him a BA? He's going to be making all this money. And I was like, what? Like, what's happening? I mean, he, he's on the slate that you guys have always supported, and you're mad that he's going to be making more money now. Now I'm like, oh, man. You know, that that's that. me looking at that back then, I'm like, man, this is going to be a hard thing for me and Batty to overcome because we're trying to unseat them, and we're African-American. Here it is, the African-American is already on the ticket, and they don't want that brother to make uh you know, more money. So what did we do? We said, you know what? We're going to take a pay cut. First year is going to be 5%. The second year is going to be 3%. And the last year is going to be 1%. And we don't want the car. So now you're now focusing on the stereotype. Now you're going to be focusing on what we were talking about, what we were trying to do for the membership, how we plan on fighting the company. But we had to take that stereotype away from our members. Because and listen, and, and, and this is not calling out anybody. It's just, it's just, it's just America. It's just a part of the Teamsters. It's just a systemic problem that we have. You know, um, me and Babby, we can't take the, the away the fact that we're African American. Nor do we want to, right? But we need people at you know even now we need people to stop looking at our race and look at our work, right? And that's why we made the decision to take the pay cut to. Give it, you know, the lease cars and all that kind of stuff because we wanted people not to look at what we were going to gain, but what the membership was going to gain by voting for us. So that's why we made that decision because we get phone calls now and conversations and like, hey, Hooker, man, you guys don't make enough money. Yeah. And uh, so let's explain the, the pay cut issue because I know people are saying you guys make more than what you did inside the build. Yeah. That's, that is true. We make more than what we made inside the build. The issue with the pay cut is we took a cut from what the salary, what the position calls for. Right. So the position calls for a certain amount. We took a 5% less than what that was. So we did the job for less mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what the pay cut means. I know a lot of people say, well, we are still making more money. But we're, and, and for, like for me, I would do the job for the, the UPS salary because I love doing the Absolutely. job. Absolutely. And right. the car, like the money car, that stuff. That stuff don't make you who you are. No, it doesn't don't make you who you are. You, <coughs> you can know, have the, the the biggest car and be the worst business agent ever. Right. And I, I I would challenge anybody to ask the question: What are we not doing? What what are we not doing? Because I know look, one of the biggest things that was said about the old administration was you couldn't get in contact with them. Yeah. You come down to the hall now. That phone does not ring half the day. And the reason why it doesn't ring is because we, every business agent on the, on the slate, are accessible through cell phones, through email. You can call, right now, if you can call your business agent any time of the day, and if we don't ask, we get right back to you, call our cell phones, see us in the building, and you see us in the building, call cell phones. So we are that much accessible. Right. So I haven't had a message left at the hall for me in months. I, I we got this little red ticking yeah, thing. Yeah. Never like so. Yeah, the only messages I get is about um voting uh not voting for this candidate, voting for that candidate, you know, that kind of stuff. But it's not nothing coming from the membership, man. And again, it, it just we told you guys that we were gonna be in the buildings every day. We told you that we were gonna do these things because it meant a lot to us. And a lot of people um that we talk to when they talk to us, they say, you know, they always say um, you know, Hooker, you were the first African American um, principal officer, and I appreciate that. But to me, that really is a, is a true testament to the membership mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they took the chance. Some of our testimonials that that we put out on Facebook and our literature, they always, you know, especially Cheryl Heffernan. I, I really like what she said. She said something like, you know, um, I was I wasn't sure about voting for these guys. Tommy Schweizer, the same thing. Yeah. I wasn't sure. Tommy said he didn't vote for us. Right. But we had to do the work to get them to see us in a different light. Same thing with Ms. Cheryl. She said, man, listen, I, I was I was nervous. I, I don't know. I didn't know if this was going to be the right decision. But we knew something had to change. Same, oh, and I'm going to tell you all something. The Greyhound members, hate. they hated me. I'm talking about, man, I used to go down there to try to campaign, and it was like, yo, man, what you doing down here? Who are you? 
and I and I get where it came from because all they knew was the previous principal officer, right? And that's all they knew. So here's a guy coming in, man. Who are you? But you go talk to Miss Taryn now. You talk to Miss Carolyn now. It's totally different because you know they saw what we did in action and how we worked together, and what and what we plan on doing when when company was trying to play hardball with their contract. Mm -hmm. Man, and you know how I do. They start talking. All right, all right. Meeting is over. Next day we we walk the street. By that by that Monday, okay. All right, Richard. Man, how can we make this thing right? But that's how it is, man. I don't do a lot of back and forth. You say your piece. I don't agree with it. All right, well, we'll take you to the street. This is the way it is, man, because our members pay a lot of money and dues. They work very, very hard, and they don't need leadership that's just going to cowtail, bow down, go along with the get along, because these jobs are very, very hard. Then when you throw COVID into it, and that's the other part that people don't know. So yeah. we get in office, two weeks we go to panel with a very contentious case. A few weeks later, boom, COVID happens. In the February. Right. Boom, COVID happens. New leadership, don't have the experience. We're still fighting the company. Greyhound contract is up. We negotiate that, and then boom, COVID happens. Man, what are we going to do? And you know what? People, are, and they look at us like, Y'all went this position. What you gonna do? Right, right, and right. We was that. I think we was at Panda when and when it happened. And, and we was when it happened. We talked to the labor manager, and uh, we kept trying to ask for certain things for the membership. Kept getting the same answer. Y'all essential. That's it. Right. So, true to our form, <laughs> we had to go above and beyond. Yep. And then it's like when you do certain things like that. Then they look at you like, like why, you, why you do it? Like, you're a bad guy. Like, listen, guys, I'm going to tell you something. When you guys see us out on the street and you guys see us going after these guys, certain individuals, that's not our first intention. A lot of stuff that goes on behind the closed doors, we try our best to work it out because that's the last resort. And I, I sent, I, I sent the, um, the district labor manager at the time, I sent them emails. I sent him videos of the um, water not working in the bathrooms. I sent him pictures of just the trash everywhere. Weeks went by. Called him. No, no response. I said, no problem. Like, like you said, I don't, I don't go back and forth with these guys, man. I say my piece. They don't agree. All right. Then, boom, this is what you're going to get. And so, boom, man, we hit them hard, man. We went every. We went to ABC, NBC, Democracy Now. Dude, we was on everything. And then... Now, now we the bad guys. Now, how we the bad guys? And then we had actually we had a meeting right. with the late with like the, the top, top district, right? And they said, "But well, well, don't go on TV. We gonna do that." Right? He called me on Sunday. Listen, Hooker man, listen. Are you guys busy on Monday? We wanna have a meeting with the president of the district. Um, just just don't go on TV no more. So basically, don't go on TV and tell the truth. Tell right. Don't tell the don't truth. don't right. let the people see because all we were saying was the UPS truth. care about this, right. UPS care about that. But then you got our members in the buildings right. with no PPE. Uh, the, the, the buildings was filthy. No no water. No running water. Dude, it was bad. Listen, we had drivers sending us emails and pictures of how the trucks was just destroyed, and I sent it over to I sent it to them. And this was, and it was no response. I said, "All right, no problem. Now you got it." And then we took it to the next level, you know. So, and, and that's what we will continue to do. We always try to work it out as much as possible. We're not always going to agree, but when it's something like this, COVID, dude, they they had to be put on blast like that because you're just not going to disrespect disrespect our people and think we're just going to sit there and take it. And we were not the ones who say, "Oh, it was COVID. We can't go to work." If our members was there, was there. the business age was in that building. Yeah. And we, we never missed no time as well. No. And like I said, if y'all had to be there, y'all essential, so do we. I actually told Miss Taryn at, um, you know, at Greyhound, she said, man, you know, aren't you, aren't you a, a worried about it? I said, no, nah, man, if you, if you guys catch COVID, we're going to catch COVID with y'all because we're going to be in there too. You know, and, and, and that's the way it had to be, man, because you guys, we work for you guys. You work, If you guys working... We working, you know, um, we, we were in there. Now, the only thing that, that we did um, was change the way we operated at the hall. 
Like because I, I I did I did have to be responsible and not have all the BAs at the hall and then trying to go into the buildings because two and three BAs going down with COVID, that's irresponsible for what we were trying to do to the members. So what we did do was shut down. The, I was the only one that came to the hall. Everybody else went, you know, was at home working or went to the buildings. So we weren't, you know, because Romeo had actually came down with COVID. And so we were like, no, nah, we can't, we can't, we can't make sure that this happens where you got two and three BAs down. Now the members, the members are not getting protected. And now, you know, we can't, we can't operate like that. So we did make some, some decisions, you know, to cut down everybody coming to the hall. We had to close down the hall because, you know, of COVID. Uh, so. No, take that a step further. Mm. So you can, you can, you can, a lot of people didn't even know the hall was even shut down. For some fact that the BH was still in the building, yeah, yeah, you can still contact them because right. you can call on cell phones. You right. had to call the hall, right? So even during that time, we were still totally accessible. Yeah. So I definitely proud, proud, um, a proud of the fact that we did do that. That was yeah. one of the promises that we made yeah. that we was going to make mm -hmm. it accessible, and we were. Yeah. Now, and I think actually one of the biggest changes was from see a lot of people. It's not more about us. Let's talk about Trish because Trish is oh, yeah. Trish yeah. is essential yeah. to the operation of this union. A lot of people don't know who she is, and one of the things what people are saying, even from us, you call the hall, you can't get an answer. The phone rings all day long, but it wasn't her fault. She was overwhelmed. Yeah, and if you notice, you call the hall now, you'll get an answer. You'll get an answer. I'm glad you brought that. I'm glad you brought Trish up. So a lot of people don't know this too. So you're going to get the raw and uncut today. Oh, yeah. So um, after we got elected in November of 19, in our bylaws, you know, there's a part in there where the outgoing administration brings on the um, next administration principal officer, and we go over some things for the final two weeks, right? So in my, for, so in my, my two weeks there of getting trained, looking over the policy procedure book, I actually uh, talked about um, um, talked to Trish about you know what 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 do you need Trish now now you gotta I don't know if anybody has been to the hall when you come into the hall she, she it's, it's it's office so when you come in you sit down you could you couldn't even see Trish because it was so much work piled up she was overwhelmed. Answering the phone calls, trying to do everything that, that her job and, and you know inquires when it tells I, I should say. So I'm looking, I said, Trish, what do you need? She said, I need some help. No problem, Trish, I got you. So I uh, did some research, and there was a, a gentleman by the name of Dustin Guastala. A lot of people call him Dino, and there was some stuff about him put out there that we were paying him $150,000. Then then they found out that that wasn't right. Then it said it was a hundred thousand dollars. Then it was they. It kept going down and down and down until they found out that the guy made less than seventy thousand dollars. And you gotta understand. I I, I need y'all to really understand what Dino means mm -hmm. to this union. Not that now we, we talked about trips, but you gotta understand what Dino means. Yeah. Before we got an offer, the way things work, they had this mail check-in list. So all of all the discipline letters come to the hall, and you gotta manually go through all these discipline letters. You gotta manually do it. What Dino does, he takes all those letters, compiles them into his laptop. You can call, I can call Dino right now. Dino, what does this person have on their record? He can pull it up and tell you. And you, we have won countless grievances. Countless. Because he is so detailed and so organized with those discharge letters. And look at the web. Let's look at the website. <laughs> look at the the website get, itself is a a hundred times better than what listen, it was. You can get the instructions to bake a cake. On the website, you get anything on there. Any um, drivers, OJS, shop stools about filing grievances. Um, just the, it's, it's toolboxes on how to. If you were an inside worker, if you were a driver, um, when COVID was you know was really at its height, you can go in there and find out how many cases you had in 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 your building. We was able to put that stuff out there because what I would do is I would have the call with the company. Get the information, shoot it to Dino. Dino will compile it, put it on the website, so members knew what building, what shift, you know, 
and you were you, you could ask questions and, and all this other kind of stuff but that's that is what he does for the local you know what i mean he helps trish out tremendously because she asks she asks for help so when you call the union hall you get an answer either him or trish it, it it frees us up instead of trying to find go through paperwork and this 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 and this hey hey but we got this this brother here this sister here the company trying to give him a discharge does he have a warning letter no he doesn't hey man you can't do nothing to this guy or to to our sister you know something that takes right now it, it'll take us a minute to do right it would take you two weeks to go through them letters <laughs> like, right. and then who wants right. to go through right. and it's easy to miss one right. You right. give him a name, he pull it right up. So a lot of our, you know, uh, social media stuff, our um, uh, website stuff, flyering, all those kinds of things, he does a great job for us on that uh, because we, we don't have the time, you know, to do a lot of this stuff. And, you know, um, and Trish, I'm going to tell you something. Um, if you really want to know how it benefits the local, ask Trish. Ask Trish. Um, she's been here longer than all of us put together as far as being at that hall. Just ask Trish. She can tell you better than anybody about what Dino means to the group. And we and we see it. You know, we hear it all the time. And I, I had a conversation with someone because it keeps being brought up, you know, about, you know, his political, you know, side. Listen, I don't care. I don't care if you're black, white, red, yellow, Democrat, Republican. Um, what, what uh, social, uh, DSA, ABC, one, two, three, I, I don't care. Do we do the job? That, that's all that matters to me. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I, all I care is, yo, here's the enemy, UPS, Greyhound, Amazon, boom, boom, boom. How can you help us win against them? How can you help us, our members? That's it. I don't care nothing about that. I don't care if you, who you vote for, who you didn't vote for, who you like. No, dude, I could care less. Uh, again, you ain't got to take our word for us. Call and talk to Trish. Here's a number if you want to talk to her. 215-289-0580. She can tell you better than all of us put together. And the difference is when you call, you'll get an answer. You'll get an answer. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's the difference in right, itself. Right, So, yeah, man. So, another thing that we wanted to talk about, too, because this is election time. And, you know, this is the 623 Lives Matter radio show. And we are off the clock. And we are off the clock. I mean, we're using our own personal time. Speaking of personal time, um, and I'll let you, I'll let you go. But my mine is mine is real, real quick. You know, right. They they like they want to really throw you under the bus, drive under it, and then throw you in it. So there was this thing out about I make so much money. You know because we we made this uh, campaign promise, which we have stuck to, um, that. You know, I make all this money, and I use the the union hall for my own personal, whatever. Um, so, I don't take time off. And Ron Kamak, he he beats me up all the time. Rich, you need to start taking some time off. You 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 know, you you just nonstop. And but I will say this, and I appreciate what those guys tried to do by putting my my uh, how much I make out there. It did convict me of a lot of things because. When I saw my vacations get paid out, I saw my personal time get paid out, and my sick time I didn't lose, I was convicted because that's the, that's the time I should have been spending with my family. Yes. And I didn't do that. You're talking about five, six weeks of vacation time that I did not use to spend that time with my family. My kids are growing up, my wife and her health issues. And I didn't use that time. So I, I do want to I thank them for doing that. I appreciate that because I needed to see that. I did because, you know, we, we work all these long hours. We don't take the time off. And we get paid out for it. That's, that's part of what we, as a Teamster, even if you are, because uh, our, our, our payout is based on the UPS contract. Today, right now, if you don't use your personal time, sick time, vacation time, what happens? You get paid out. You get paid out for it. Just like what we did. So so by me getting paid out, it made it look like I made $132,000. From 1-1-21 to 12-31-21, my actual work that I put in was 118. 118. The bottom of the list. 
just like I was last year, the bottom of the list. But when you don't take time off, this is what happened. I got paid out. So I appreciate what they tried to do because you did convict me of something that I need to be better at, spending more time uh, with my family. And so you ain't got to worry about that this time. Matter yeah. of fact, in about two weeks, matter of fact, on our, after our union meeting, the 22nd, I'm burning the road up, I-95 South, get me some Bojangles, man, me and the missus, we're going to go down there, see her family, man, we're going we gonna to have a good time. I'm, I'm going to do my best to use every last one of my vacations, every last one of my days. And, and again, I appreciate what they tried to do because it did convict me of something that I need to be better at. And, and Ryman telling me that, you know, and they just really solidified what Ryman telling me. So I appreciate it. So that's the true thing. You know, um, we put it out there countless times, but people still want to rehash it. And it's fine. We're not here to attack anybody um, because Kara Tomei, Jeff Bezos, the Walton family, those are our enemies. Those are our enemies. Yeah. So we raw, right? We're going to be raw. We're raw, raw. So I'm, going, I'm glad he brought up family because there was uh, some stuff out there, and I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to let y'all hear it from me. Yeah. So one of the things that was put out there was, I got seven children. I do. So I you not... know what? Let me stop you there. Not only do you got seven kids, but you take care of the last one of them. That's true. And you're in every last one of their lives. I am. And I'm so, going to continue yeah, to be. Yeah. So if I don't know if that's put out there, I got seven kids, is, is the shameful? Mm -hmm. am, am I ashamed of having seven children? No, I'm not. I'm proud of every last one of my children. I'm going to always take care of them. Another thing that was put out there was, I got seven. I got seven kids by one woman. I do. Say it again. Seven kids by one woman. Yeah. Okay. I ain't out there with all these different baby mama dramas. <laughs> I was married to this woman, and that was nothing else put out there. Seven kids. Now he's divorced. <laughs> Stuff happened, and I got divorced. Yeah. I met another young lady. Now, the, one of the things that was put out there that which wasn't true was I married my high school sweetheart. <laughs> That's what, that's what it was put out there. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. So, I did get remarried. It was not to my high school sweetheart. It was, uh, I met, a, I met a, another nice, beautiful young lady. We clicked. We got married. And that's when I, I'm, I'm married to this day. So, out of my, I'm 44 years old. I'm about to be 45. Out of my adult years, I've been with my ex-wife since I was 19. Raised all my children, and then I said it didn't work out, and I got remarried to another young lady. So if you want to condemn me for being a father of seven, after getting divorced, still taking care of those seven, after getting remarried, still taking care of those seven, then I'm guilty. Okay, I'm guilty. But my thing is this, and I'm I'm glad you're saying that, Chris. What does that have to do with me doing the job? It doesn't. The problem is, and Clarence, and you and I, we talk about this. We have been conditioned to attack each other. Like you always said that, and you're right. And and I hate to bring up the whole stereotype thing because that's what this, that's what kind of the basis of a lot of these attacks. Money, you, you and your family situation, cars. All, all this stuff is stereotypical. That's, that's what this is all about because we have to, because something I learned from this preacher, he said, distracted people do what? They distract people. Yes. They want to get you distracted from the fact that we got over $250,000 in grievance payouts. Don't focus on the fact that we're in the building every day. Don't focus on the fact that we got the building, the union hall remodeled. Don't focus on the fact that we fight the company and we're organizing new members and we just got to organizing the customer economy clerks and we just got to getting... The great home members are uh, just historical wages and protections. Don't focus on that part. Focus on the part where the stereotypical part. Because if I can get you distracted enough, then I may be able to get you to forget that the fact that these guys have been fighting hard for the last two plus years. That's what this is about. To get everybody distracted. But we're not going to let that happen. So basically they're magicians. <laughs> so they, they want to pull the wool over your eyes. Right. So right. they, instead of them, because my thing is this, and I'll ask anybody, tell me what we're not doing. Though you're, you, you, you bring up 
how much money you made. Yeah. Bring up, I got children that got remarried to my high school sweetheart, which wasn't my high school sweetheart, my sweetheart now. <laughs> you bring up the fact that, like, all this stuff, but not one thing that you have said about what you can do better than what I can do. Talk about the checks, too. Got to talk oh, about the this checks. Is, and, talk about the checks. And I'm going to put it out there because this is raw. Yeah, this is raw. Right. So it was an issue put out there that I, was, I couldn't sign checks. And it upset me because... It wasn't the fact that it was a lie. It was it was a, a total lie. That's the main thing. But the second thing is, you're telling me you're telling people I can't sign checks. I got bad credit, which ain't true. That's the one thing that ain't true, which makes it a stereotype towards uh, us. But the other thing is, you're telling people you want to say total transparency. So total transparency is there are four signers who can sign checks, and out of those four, any two. Had two names got to be on the checks, so it can be a combination between me and Hook, or Hook and Norm, whoever it is. It just be had to be a combination of two. So it just so happens, the week that I got married, I wasn't at the hall. Right. So Norm had to sign the checks, which is how it works. Right. So instead of instead of knowing how it actually works. You want to put a story out there to try to make us look bad. So how can you take anybody who's that irresponsible serious? How can you, this is a multi-million dollar entity, this Teamster Union. So how can you trust people who are that irresponsible with information that you put out there that's totally untrue? And I'll, I, 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 I'll put it out there like this. If you don't believe me, the person that put it out there, go talk to the person that you are so tight with, and they'll tell you who name is on those joint council checks. Every last one of them joint council checks has my name on. Yeah. And I guarantee you they cash Because yeah. they didn't, we're here, Bob. Yeah, yeah, there'll be change in the door. Yeah, it'll be, it'll be change, yeah, change on the door. The door yeah. So yeah. I have never been removed from signing checks, and I'm never going to be removed. So that information was 100% false. So, and I'm right now. I'm still waiting for, because uh, I'm a voter. Yeah. I'm a member. Even though I'm the, I'm the president now, I'm still a voter. So, tell me, put out there, what you're gonna do better. Like for instance, I play softball. I love playing softball, and I don't want to play. On, I, I I said I played on a team with all my friends. So, don't put me in a position just because I'm your friend. If there's somebody better at the position than me, they should be there. So if you're better at this position than I am, tell me why. Because I'm, I'm a voter, so I got to vote too. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me why. Now, I can tell you what I did. <laughs> I can tell you that I was a part of all those $250,000 grievances. $250,000. Definitely more, a part of that. It's more than that. It's more. I've been the panel and won yeah. cases that we shouldn't have won, yeah. that we won. And we have, between me and Tiny... We have just changed and got everybody paid double time for them holidays that they said we weren't going to get. Right. And if you, I'm a part of this administration. If you look at the discipline history and the way that we read the contract, the numbers speak for themselves. 48% down. So 48%. The reason why the discipline is down is because we incorporate and we are enforcing the language that should be enforced. Right. So... I can tell you what I can do, but I can show you better than what I can do. Absolutely. And I've been doing that. Yep, absolutely. So then, you know, uh, we had to make some moves on our um, on our board. We just want to talk about that because, um, as you guys know, um, our new uh, 623 Lives Matter team is not um, the original one. We had to make some changes um, because, again, um, Decisions, decisions that were made had to be made for the benefit of the workers. And whenever um, things happen that puts the members and this local in jeopardy, everything is going to come back down on me, especially in anything bad. Anything goes wrong. I've had a few phone calls about certain things according to, for, to what Babby was talking about earlier with his ability to operate in his his financial duties as president 
of this local. I had a, a phone call from the trustee of the IBT about that. Um, and, and this is why we had to change um, some things about our board. Um, one of those things we had to put in place um, was uh, Tom Tiny Callen. Great, great individual. And another thing, well, why would you pick him? He ran against you. Again, I, I don't care nothing about politics. I don't, I don't even know what much, much more to say. Um, I care about the people. And, and Tiny, may, I think I told Tiny this one time. One of the reasons why um, I, wanted, I wanted Tiny to be with us is this, this, this right here. When we were running against each other, he said something when we were campaigning. He was talking to other people. He said, all Hooker wants to do is blow up the union and start all over again. And he's right. I think um, from, from what was happening with our local and to an extent what is happening um, at the IBT, we, we need to just start brand new, new ideas, new vision, a new attitude, because what we have gotten has not what we needed. And you see that with the, you know, the contract being forced on us and, you know, no engagement from your local, no engagement. And I see the IBT trying to do that now. Uh, but from a local standpoint, from what was going on, it, it did need to be blown up and started all over again. Because, again, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over again with the same people. Not even the same people. You can have different people but the same vision or the same ideology as the people before. If you do the same thing over and over, don't expect a different result. Right. And that's, what, and that's one of the things why I always respected about Tiny. Even though we may have ran against each other, he understood the vision that I had for the local. And again, I don't care if you're black, white, female, uh, uh, Democrat, Republican, whatever. If you understand the goal and you want to help us get there, I'm with you. Now, if you want to be a politician, then I, I, don't, I don't have nothing for you because I'm not a politician. I'm a worker. Um, I actually tell people all the time, I'm a rank and file member who just happens to be the principal officer of this local every decision i make um every move that i've made based on me being a rank and file member um you know not the principal officer not the secretary treasurer now that there are some times i do have to be <laughs> those things you know but i try to when i make a decision i i have in mind that same guy who used to load 17 creek parkway who used to clean up those paint spills and who had to load those trucks and shift those trucks. When I make a decision, it's based on that, not based on me sitting at the hall or going to meet this person or getting a call from this guy because he won an endorsement. That's part of the job, but that's not who I am, right? We, 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 and I get mad, man, because I don't get to go down there and bust the company up like I want to because I got to be, they want me to be this pilot. They want me to be the principal officer, quotation, or the secretary treasurer when it comes to politics, man. And I don't understand the politics of this stuff. I, I, I really don't get it. Like, I thought we were trying to fight for the member in every decision that was made. I thought that's what this was about. So we, we can disagree. But don't disagree when it comes to fighting Carol Tomei and her team. That's the part that really frustrates me. We can go back and forth with a lot of things. Look at man. You should have you supported this guy. Well, I didn't. I didn't. That doesn't make me a bad person. No. You, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. Just like everybody has, has a right to vote. Yeah. And it's kind of like, it's kind of like when, like, I've heard, like, I've, I've heard certain stories, like, with other union guys. Like, one union guy here told me, he said, listen, I fight with my board members all the time. Like, we go out there and we fist fight and things like that. But then the company say something, we stop fighting, go fight them. And they come back. And then right? come back and start yeah. fighting again. Right, 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 so, right. It, like, you're not going to always agree on no, certain things. No. Like, because we're not robots. We're human beings. Yeah. Everybody has an opinion. But the one thing we have to stay united against is UPS. Yeah, absolutely. So you have to stay united against them because if they can divide us, then it's easier to conquer us. And we saw that firsthand. Our very first meeting, January the 8th, I'll never forget yes. it. January the 8th, 2020. We go up in the office of Oregon Avenue. First thing they say, they say, um, hey, man, you know, we we seeing some stuff on Facebook, social media, you know, is, 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 are, 
are you still a, a BA? And that's when I knew. They watch every single thing we do. That's why I refuse to go back and forth with people over dumb stuff. Had a conversation with somebody not long ago. They said, well, Hooker, if you don't respond to what people put out about you negatively, then people are going to believe it. My number is 267-235-1588. Call me. Whatever you hear about me, whatever, whatever the case may be, 267 267- Two three five one five eight eight, uh, because uh, we don't have time to go back and forth. Um, one of the things that that I always come to mind when people say, "Man, you got to respond to this stuff," is there was a letter that Martin Luther King wrote um, when he was in the in the jail in Birmingham. If you guys read that first part of that letter, he talks about what because at that time he had a lot of his his fellow clergymen going at him for some of his stances, what he was doing. And what he said was, if I go back and forth with you guys, then it's not going to be much time for me to, to do the work that I need to be doing. And that's my response. That same response he had to the people who agree with me or to the people who don't. Carol told me just took $4 and, and some places more than that and $2 from a lot of our workers here at UPS in 623. I don't have time to be worrying about what this guy is saying, what this person is saying. We got to stop her and what she's doing. Yeah. So if if you want to believe what these guys are saying, I'm, listen, I'll go forward. But again, you have my number. You'll see me. Um, email me. Come to the hall. We can talk. I'm there. Talk. I'm an open book. I don't try to hide anything. I have nothing to hide because that's one of the things that we really focus on is being truly authentic and transparent. We don't want to hide anything from anybody, even when it hurts. Uh, you know what I mean? Because that's, we're not perfect. There's been some decisions, man. I'm like, man, maybe I should have done something different. You know, you know, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Maybe I should have, shouldn't have, uh, you know, took that strong stance at that particular time. But you know, um, we 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 we're still learning. You know, we we're still learning. We're still we're still trying to grasp. How to do the job? Because again, we've been shot through for so long. Mm -hmm. We only know one way, and that's to attack, attack, attack. But being in this position, I know there's sometimes, man, you just have to sit back, listen, um, not be uh, as aggressive as much, but you still have to be aggressive. Um, some things didn't turn out the way I wanted them to. Um, I wish everything would have worked out for our original team, mm -hmm. you know, politically. But that's not what I'm about, man. The members need to be protected at all times. It may come a point in time where the members of 63 say, Hooker, hey, man, um, thank you for your services, man, but we, 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 we want somebody else. Bagby, thank you for your services, man, but we want somebody else. Until that time come, we're going to still do what's in the best interest of our members, creating those committees that we talked about. Generation 623 Committee, the Unite Committee. The Women's Caucus. Speaking of the Women's Caucus, as you guys know that this Sunday is Mother's Day. So the the, the special women of 623, uh, our Women's Caucus, will be getting um, some roses. We've been doing this for the last, man, six before, years. Since, yeah, before we even got even in before office. Before we got office, we, we, we've always given out our, uh, our female, our mothers, some flowers, and we want to continue that tradition. Uh, this time, we have the Women's Caucus helping us. Um, they're going to be out there um, giving out the flowers to our, our lovely mothers. Again, we appreciate um, the sacrifice that a mother makes. Um, and listen, I wish I still had my mother. You know, um, I, listen, I think about her often, you know, uh, a lot of times. So, And I, I wish she was still here. But again, this, this, this weekend is Mother's Day. Our Women's Caucus will be out on Friday giving out flowers and roses to our mothers. We appreciate you uh, tremendously. Thank you for all you guys have done. Um, again, you know, love you, Mom. My stepmom down in, in, in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina. Uh, appreciate you. All, all the moms listening, happy Mother's Day. Uh, if you're a Teamster mom, you, you get a special Mother's Day gift. All right, make sure you, your, your kids get you something special for Mother's Day because being a teamster and a mom, man, that's a double a double blessing. Definitely so, is. Yeah. So 
as we get ready for um, next year, on the other side of this break, we want to talk about the contract. We got two contracts. We got a Greyhound contract, and we have also the UPS contract. And as you guys know, we've been taking inventory on what our members are looking for during this contract. Um, subcontracting, 224 issues. Um, I know a lot of our preloaders at PHL want to have job bidding yeah. like at Oregon Avenue. Um, so we're going to be talking about that too. So right now you're listening to WOOM 92.9 giving you a, another edition of the 623 Lives radio show. We'll be right back after the break. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can hear it up there. Now. Wait, no, no, oh no, that, that's but is it here? Oh, that's up there. Yeah, no, it's on the sound. Well, unless it came out the headphones. Oh, that's that's probably where it's coming out now. So I, I don't know who Noah is, but uh, in our local, uh, the, the drivers don't just get the full-time job opportunities because we have uh, a different way of going through full-time jobs so especially uh, the way it works we have three so when a job becomes open it goes to that classification so sometimes drivers can't even take those jobs so it will go to that classification then the second move it goes to all classifications when the drivers can take them then the third move it goes to the part-timers right. so the way our local has it you have the classification people are covered then the, the drivers are covered right and the part times to cover, so there's equal opportunity for everybody right. to get a full time job. Yeah, no, it's it's different here. Like it's, it's like a three step process. Like like Bagby was saying, the first move if we call it the first move, second move, and the third move. First move stays within the classification. Second move open it up to all full timers, and then the third moves it goes down to the dovetail list, which is our dovetail list is where our part timers become full timers. Unless it's a new job. If it's a right. brand new job, it goes straight to the right part-time. To the first, right. So and we've had over sixty part times get new jobs last year. Yep. All right, welcome back. This is South Philadelphia Community Radio, W O O M ninety two point nine, giving you another edition of the six two three Lives Matter show. So we've been talking about just kind of giving everybody an overview of our, our first two years, um, the challenges. Um, what's your biggest challenge that you would say that, that we've had to take on? Have you personally, as president, had to, had to take on over these two-plus years? The biggest challenge for me was managing time. Oh, yeah. So, uh, I, so when you work in a building, you, you got to be there at a certain time, you go home at a certain time. It's all it's set, right? But for me, just me personally, I'm responsible for three shifts: preload, twilight, and midnight. That's a 24-hour operation. So, managing time, where do I can hit those shifts con continuously and frequently, and be able to be in the building, be available for phone calls and things like that, and I got a family. Yeah. So, trying to manage time. Is what I, like was the biggest challenge for me? Yeah, mine is. I'm gonna tell you something, man. Time, um, politics. Oh, the politics of the job. So that's one thing I had to deal with. And so. I hate it, dude. I hate. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. And um, and dealing with the the, the funds that that we have, the, the legal service fund. You know, I was when you when you first got in, I was like, man, what is happening? But you know, it. I, I figured it out. Got it together, cause you remember we had the, the legal service fund meeting. You was like, man, <laughs> but but we got through it. Everything is good, you know. And also, um, my my another challenge that I think. All right, Paul, I got we got I got to take you up on that, man. And something that you know, it's Paul. I'm glad you're watching. Um, there's something that I was thinking about yesterday that I don't know if you can do it, but I would like for you guys to come up with a training program where it breaks down the cultural differences, societal differences in our teams' union, especially when it comes to um, union leadership, 
there is a barrier um, when it comes to um, leadership, new leadership. Uh, there's a cultural difference. Um, people that's been in office for decades, they don't understand really what, you know, especially if you're not a person of color and which is, I think 400 of our leaders are, um, are, are, are white. And then you have maybe 20, um, African American or people of color, um, head guys or head, uh, I'll just say principal officers of locals and you have even, even fewer women. So if there's something, man, that you guys can come up with where we all can break down that barrier of engagement because, for an example, you know, I, I don't understand a lot of the decisions that are made by a lot of these guys that's in office. It's like, a, a and, and they don't understand me. And there's always, there's going to be a clash. It's going to be a clash constantly, and it's not going to work out. Um, there has to be something that we, we can talk to. Oh, thank you, brother. I, I, I Listen, when y'all have that, please let me know because I need it, brother, because I, I just don't, I don't, I don't get it, man. There's a barrier when it comes to leadership when you got people that's been in there forever and you, when you're young and you come in with a different set of ideas and a vision, there's a constant clash going on. There's no communication. There's no engagement. And there's culpability on both sides. I don't want to say that point the finger at this person and that person points the finger at, at what we're trying to do. But there's, there is culpability. I, I own up to, to, to my part. But there has to be some type of, of training or engagement where, okay, this is, this is how things have worked. This is what we're trying to go to. Let's come together, you know, somewhere in the middle where we continue to maybe – we're going to have our differences, but not at the expense of our members, and we can still fight the company. Just just throw that in there. So let me get back to the challenges um, that I've had. Time, oh, my God, time. There is no time. They, they, they need to add some more time in the day. Um, there is just not enough time. I think my wife's going to put me out soon or either, you know, put me on the ba- or down in the basement. I think she's watching, so I'm, I'm, she's probably going to put me out. Um, just, just, I remember one time, man, I left the house at two in the morning. I didn't get back to the next day until four in the morning. You know, um, I, I gotta get back. So baby, if you're watching, I apologize <laughs> again. Um, we're going to try to work on that. Um, but the politics, the time, getting the, the, our funds that we have, getting that together. Um, you know, those things have been challenging, but fighting the company, man, we've been doing it for so long. It just, it just. It's natural. Natural. You know, because that's what we've always been doing. It's the other stuff that, you know, um, that gets to you. And also, too, my, and, I, and again, being up, uh, up front and honest, I have a tendency to sometimes second guess myself. You know, am I making the right move? When we brought in Kamak, was Kamak the right tiny? You know, letting this person go, was it the right move? Da, 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 da. You know, I uh, second guess myself a lot because I wake up in the morning, man, I ain't going to do this. I, but then when I started talking to people, I'm like, man, is this the right? That's the challenge because I don't want my I don't want to make up the wrong decision that impacts a lot of people because I know there's a lot of people, man, who and I hate to say it, um, they don't want us to succeed. They're looking for a reason right to say oh look look what, look why what happened yeah. right and, and and i don't want to give them that reason this is, and sometimes the stereotype mm-hmm. and, and and again again i'm not i'm just as open and honest sometime because you hit a stereotype you start believing it you start second guessing yourself and like man maybe they were right maybe you're not smart enough because that they came out with that Oh man, you had to get somebody else because you're not smart enough. No, 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 no. Sometimes it takes a smart person to realize I need help. Right. Certain, certain a- absolutely, areas. absolutely, man. But um, so that those are the kind of things that I challenge that that are challenging to me to make sure that you know, um, when I make a decision, not to keep going over it, second guessing myself, because man, I'm I'm up. That keeps me up at night, man. And I know it keeps you up at night, too. Yeah, because you got to think. Some decisions affect people's livelihoods. So, like, you don't want to make a decision 
a bad decision that affects somebody's livelihood. Yeah. Because yeah. if, like, every grievance that we have to fight, everything, I put, and I know everyone that Ebor puts 100% into it, mm -hmm. because I'm, I'm going to say it best, because Tiny says it the best, and I loved how he puts this. It's not about winning a grievance or winning a case. It's more about now that person gets to go home and take care of his family, absolutely. his or her family. Right, a absolutely, absolutely. That's what it's about. It's yeah. about them going home, taking care of their family. Yep, I agree. So, I agree. yeah, I don't want to sit here and say, yeah, I beat UPS. I can care less about UPS. But now that that person who depends on us to defend them, now they can go home and look at their wife and children right. in the face and say, I, I'm going to have a check next right, week. Right, absolutely. That's what it's about. That's what it's about. And, and, and then holding the company accountable while making sure that member can go back home yes. and take care of his family and her or, her or her family. So next year, 2023, all right? So we have this thing that one of our monikers is 623 versus 2023. It's not 623 versus anybody running against... Um, this is not 623 versus um, any political opposition. This is 623 versus Carol Tomei, versus Bezos, versus capitalists. I mean, just any corporation. That's what this is about. So we have been doing this study um, for our contract about what our members want. And so a lot of our members, and I think you guys came out to the contract uh, meeting, you'll see that. Uh, our members are very engaged with what they want and what they don't want. We actually had a member, a part-time member, come to that meeting, and she was so excited, and she actually did a video for us. And she talked about, um, you know, you know, when I first came, when I first filled out this contract proposal, um, I wanted more, you know, a higher wage per hour. But after sitting down and talking to the group, she said, well, you know, I started thinking, well, what about having more hours? Because if they pay me, you know, what I want per per hour, but I'm not getting mm -hmm. hours, then I'm not gaining anything. Yeah. And, and that's why we had that meeting, because we wanted other people from different buildings, other classifications to sit down and talk to each other about what is important so we can come up with a plan. For an example, um, I know our part-timers, they're ready to rock and roll. The moment that UPS took that MRA, it was a done deal. It was a done deal. That's why you saw the big, you know, big uptake in participation from the IBT vote and the petition drive. Yeah. The IBT vote, we had about 617 people vote, 14.9%. But in our contract, um, our petition for the MRA, 22, over 2,200. That's over 50%. You know, close to 60. So what does that tell you? You know, and no slight to the IBT and, and the new regime, uh, but I think our members are more uh, concerned with what's going on with them locally. And, and that's what we have to do. And, that, and that's what we're going to be focusing on on this contract. You know, going through the data, having our contract committee meet, and shout out to Kim Mac Thomas, Mike Regal, um, uh, 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 Robert Trainer, uh, Eddie Brooks, you know, uh, shout out to Ryan Boyd, all um, the members on our rank and file committee, and we got an ace in the hole too. We got we got a a, a big ace. We're gonna drop drop on the company when we go to the table. We ain't, we're not letting nobody know. Please don't ask us. If you want to say, oh man, um, you guys say you're gonna be transparent, where well, you're gonna have to hold out on this one. We got a. Uh, an ace in a hole on this one. So we can't wait. So I'm glad you brought the contract up. So, I mean, the, the contract. Well, that's mm -hmm. answer, Abe. Is the, the way that works is when new jobs are in the contract, then our local gets 25 per year. So when, when the contract calls for new jobs, we get 25. So I think the calls for the con it calls for, for uh, new jobs in the last three years, so we got 75 new jobs. A lot of them went to 22 fours, but there were a lot of at least 75 new full-time jobs. So, but back to the contract. The way we beat UPS is by uniting. Yes. So, and I have to bring this up because it's heavy on my heart right now. And I got to bring up Mr. Vinny Perform. I mm -hmm. want to give a shout out to Vinny. Yeah, absolutely. For the simple fact that he shows what 
a good leader is. So, you everybody has an opinion on who they want to vote for yeah. in, in the upcoming election. Because if you didn't have an opinion, why is there an election? <laughs> right, so, right. If, if you're going to just tell me who to vote for, then it shouldn't be an election. Mm-hmm. So, what Vinny did is, after everything was done, and because he's the new package director, so he's going to be directly involved in contract negotiations. Mm-hmm. The way you win a good contract is you get all the locals involved. So you can't win a good contract against UPS if you shun a local. So it makes yeah. no sense yeah. not to shun anybody. Right. So what he did, he came to our, we, we, we asked him, he came to our general membership mm-hmm. meeting. He spoke very, very well. What he also did was he gave us vision on what they was planning on doing, yep. on how to fight the company. So that, to me, is a great leader. Absolutely. And another thing that he said um, before he left is about mobilization. And so for even though we're going to be on summer break as far as our general membership meetings from June, July, and August, we're going to be launching a um, proposal campaign during those months to, to keep everybody involved we're going to have parking lot meetings. We're going to be just talking about, um, you know, all that kind of stuff because, you know, we, we're we going to have to work together on this thing. And Christopher Park, that, that, that's actually, you know, the company is going to try to divide us. Oh, yeah. But we, can, yeah. we expect that. Right. But when Teamsters try to divide us, how can we win? But that's the thing, though, man. Then if, if you look at it, Teamsters have been doing that for, 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 for years. Um, you know, if you don't go along with the get-along, and that's why I hope Paul and his team come up with some type of training. Um, it's okay. It's okay not it's okay not to agree. We're not going to agree. But what it's not okay to is not show up and fight the employer. All right. So I again. So Abe, you're talking about um the Amazon. So you know, I don't know if you know, but Randy Corgan is the new director of the um, Amazon organizing uh, committee. And so now just, I can't, I can't go into details about this. Now we do talk to a lot of Amazon workers. We actually, uh, we're at one of our events, we actually have brought them down. They had some food at one of our cookouts and stuff. So we actually have some workers who work at Amazon and UPS and, um, Listen, we're, we're talking to them, but as you can see, um, what happened in, in New York, one, one facility w- it w- was organized, and then the next one, they didn't organize it. So, again, this is going to take a lot, a lot of people. It's going to take a lot of volunteering. So, hey, uh, I need you to help me out, man. Do some volunteering to help organize Amazon. We got the building right next to the, Amaz- uh, to the UPS in South Philly. Not only that, uh, we got the one that's getting ready to be built on 70th and Emswood. Um, we're going, we, we working with a group with that one too. It's a lot of stuff that we're doing behind the scenes with them. Can't go into detail with it um, because I, what I found out is when you start letting people know what you're doing, when you talk about building, mm-hmm. they try to tear you down. And we don't need that, especially with what we're trying to do with, with UPS, Greyhound. We don't need any negativity. When we're trying to go after Amazon, um, what we were trying to build. And that's what we've been doing over these last two years, building something here. And we just keep building on it day after day, month after month, year after year. You know, our first term, man, we created these committees, the 623, Generation 63 Committee, the Unite Committee, the Women's Caucus. Man, we were able to, we were able to uh, partner with community groups. Um, like the Poor People's Economic and Human Rights Campaign to help feed our part-timers who lost their job in COVID, their other job, and, you know, they was trying to find food, trying to find clothes. The local union helped them still provide. No, no, hey, don't do that, hey. No, no, come on, man, don't do that. No, man, no, man, but we need you, hey. No, straight up, man. Uh, we need We need a lot of volunteers. We need a lot of volunteers, man, because... This is this is going to be a battle. If this is going to be a battle, and I, again, I can't go into detail, uh, but we 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 just got through signing cards for another another group, and and, and I'm gonna tell you something, man. And th- and this is I don't want to sound cocky and arrogant, man. I try my best not to, but 
a lot of people have reached out to us and <laughs> a lot of people have reached out to us and want to join what we got going on for an example and, and we're going to get back to the contract it's just it's just a lot of stuff to talk about because we don't get a chance to do this show a lot and we are off the clock right right so for an example the customer counter clerk do you guys know one of the main reasons why we were able to, to organize them think about this they, they all they always been there yeah they've been there forever they've been in our jurisdiction in those buildings forever but do you know why we were able to do it because every once in a while they was able to look across the street and they saw how we were fighting the company whether it was joe gill for, for the uh for what sanifa issue right the mras the split wages and all that kind of stuff when you constantly see fight from a local union you want to be involved in that so we had another group another group another amazon group reached out to us say hey you know we're we trying to join the local union you know oh man we want to join the local union i said all right so i'm gonna send some information let's meet up he said listen you don't gotta send us anything we already know about you guys that the work speaks for us up. right then not only that another group we just got to finish getting the car signed and we're going through that process same thing you know we met we met him at a bowling alley we were talking he wanted to meet at the bowling alley a bowling alley you know what we did we met him at a bowling alley whatever these workers want us to do when it bowl uh listen i don't golf but i go out there on the golf range whatever whatever you need us to do for you so us so we can help you improve your work situation we will do it that's so back to the contract <laughs> man there's a lot of stuff going on so we're going to be going over our proposals, um, our proposal campaign, I should say, starting probably on on our, on 623 day. If you guys know 623 day is something that we started uh, on June 23rd because that's the actual date of 623. Um, we're going to be really rocking and rolling, you know, so um, we're working on the flyers now. So, for an example, if you um, have an issue with... Um, the Article 43 Premium Service Committee. You will go to that Article 43, put in what you would like, and then um, that would be your proposal. Same thing for supervisors working. You know, Article 3, Section 7. You would go to that article. If right now it reads, you know, if supervisor work, um, you get paid double time. Um, if, you, if you catch them more, um, catch them three times in a nine-month span, you get triple time. If you want to add something else to it, that's how, and, and, we'll, and we'll go over it. Right, Brother Eric, that was my next thing. Subcontracting. You know, go, go, to, go to Article 43, Article 26, you know, put the language that you want in these articles, and, we, and we'll be helping you. We're going to do this together. You know, one union, one family. Oh, come on. Hey, don't do that. You, you, you know that wasn't us. We, we keep telling you that, but, but I see what you're trying to do, man. I see what you're trying to do. But but you know that wasn't us. Um, but get your proposal, write it in there. We'll go over the contract together, and we're gonna be doing this all throughout the summer, all throughout next year until it's time to sit down and negotiate the contract. Listen, man. Um, we we're in this to 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 win, not us personally, but the local. Every decision that we make, man, is is based on what the membership needs. And uh, we appreciate you guys so, so much, man, for just giving us this opportunity. I, I can't say that enough because you guys took a chance on us. You know, when people, like I said in the, in the previous hour, when people say, oh, man, you the first, you and baby, the first African-American men to do this and that. And, and, and I appreciate that. But to me, it's just a sign of um, the membership. They took the chance. You know, they didn't have to do it. They didn't have to vote for us. They didn't. You know? They could have stayed with, you know, the previous administration. They did not have to take a chance, man, and we appreciate that because you didn't have to do it. That's why we fight like we fight. That's why we show up every day. And, you know, and that's why we don't go back and forth with the negativity because it is an embarrassment to you guys. When, when people put that stuff out, it's an embarrassment to you guys and what we've been building. You negativity know, destroys positivity. It does. It destroys everything that we're building. And again, I got to go back to that letter from the Birmingham jail that MLK wrote. He said it better than I could ever say it. 
if I focus on what other people are saying, then there's not much room for, for me to do the work. That's what he said, you know? And that's what I'm saying to everybody who said, man, Hooker, man, you got to respond, baby, you got to respond. We're not going to respond. We respond by getting you guys almost, well, over a quarter of a million dollars in grievance payouts. Well, maybe if they said saying. something, maybe if they said something based on the job or based on the work. Right. Like, if you want to say stuff about your family, like, dude, come on. Yeah. If, if you can't have an intelligent conversation about what's actually going on at the job, yeah. then what, what's, what's the need to respond? So let me ask you this question. What was your most challenging panel case okay so the most challenging panel case for me was uh the devon council case mm -hmm. this case was uh it, it, the, the, he was discharged for one thing he was thinking he was discharged for violence in the work no it wasn't violence it was violence it was violence in the workplace and some other things like that so that's where the stewards play a big, big part in what we do. So we can't do wild jobs if the stewards don't do their job. Right, absolutely. In that case, it was essential. I got information from the steward about what happened at the, the, the local, at the, the center level, at, at the discharge. Mm -hmm. See, all that stuff plays a factor in it. So I was told, well, he said this and he did this. No way he's coming back. I was told that from uh, employees who heard the conversation. I was told that from the management. No way you got it. But because they got the information from the stores and because we put everything else that we need to put in place, we was able to convince the panel that the company didn't do the right thing and he wound up coming back. So that was, it was a challenge because at first look, you like, Wow, like, like there's no way I'm going to be able to get over this hump. Right. But when you unite, so nothing's impossible. When you can unite with other union members and we all work together, like we were saying before, you win a big contract when you all work together. Right. We work together as a unit, and we got that done. Until this day, our brother Devin is working. He's not having any issues. So that 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 was one of. That, that was one of the most challenging. That was the challenging, most challenging one. Mm -hmm. But every case you take the panel is challenging. Challenging, right. But that was the most challenging. That was, that was the most challenging so case. So I got two. One was where, like you said, everybody worked together. And the other one was when the one I had. So the most challenging one where we all thought that this brother was done. You know what I'm talking about? We was like, man, there's no way. There's no way this brother's getting his job back. So then we started investigating the, the, the letters and, and what they okay and all this other kind of stuff that um the company had we're like man something just not adding up norm got in his car norm went to the area investigated mm, took his text tape measure out measure this <laughs> measure that went back to the building measuring all this like man stuff this ain't adding up so we all got in that office we all talked about it man had a pre-panel mock panel and then, man, we went down there, man, and we, and with help from the panel, because I, the, the three guys we had, man, they were wearing the company side out. Yeah. They were wearing them out. And, but, but, but that Thursday, we was like, man, this guy's not getting his job. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. He's not. But then Friday, man, we got together. Hold on a minute, man. Stuff looks like, man, stuff just not adding up. Hold on. Did they, no, they didn't even do this. What? Got, got the guy job back. But me personally, my most challenging one was where the member had used the N-word and yeah. in the safety meeting in front of all and in front of everybody. That was man. That one was 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 really, really challenging because it challenged me personally. And Kamak, and I gotta give a shout out to Kamak. Because if there's one person on our team that really hates the whole racial divide and the whole just that is him. Um, because, and I and I and I and I love that you brother know what? for that. He couldn't even read the case because no, he didn't want to say it. Because he didn't want to say it, and so that's when I said, "Hold on, come back. I'm not going to put you out there 
So as we going through the case, and I'm thinking to myself, this this brother just disrespected every person of color in this local. And me being the first ever African American person, I'm down here putting this case on to try to save this member's job. No, he just disrespected me. He disrespected you. He disrespected Norm. He disrespected every person of color in 623. And you still got to go down there and you still got to do the job. Because it's not about you. It's not about, it's not about none of that's it. That's right. To me, that was that was challenging because you're looking at the brother and you're like, man, did you you really said that in front of all the people? And every and every and every exhibit that they had, every statement was worse and worse because it was coming from people that who looked like you and I. Mm -hmm. People he worked with. Right. And I'm down there fighting for this guy. And I'm like, man, this this just this 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 cannot be the job, man. This can't but that one was challenging. Man, it was rough. I don't think I slept that I don't think I slept, man, because what can you say? How can you defend that? Especially as an African American. How can you defend someone using that term? Especially a white person. How can you how can you Defend that, and you're trying to save that person's job, like you said. It's not about you. It's about trying to do the right thing for that that person. It's a bottom line. He has a family, too. Yeah. And his and, livelihood and, was on the and line. And that's what I told the panel. I'll never forget. I said, listen, I, I grew up hearing that term. You know, I remember coming out of church in the KKK, being in the field while we trying to get on the bus to go home. You know, I, I'm, you know, I grew up in the South, so I know what that word means. You know, so... And I, and I never forget, I told the panel, all we want, man, is just to, to, to make sure that the son, his son, doesn't have to pay for his father's mistake. That's all we wanted. Anything less than determination, man. Don't don't let his son not, you know, not be able to eat and, you know, all that kind of stuff. But that was challenging, dude. Yeah. That was, yeah, and looking at you, and, and then and then we come out of the panel, and the board, and then another guy used the term. And Ron, he just walked away because it. See, we conditioned to it. Mm -hmm. But that was that was the most challenging thing, though, for for his panel. That one, that case was, oh, ooh, that was rough. But again, uh, we want to thank you guys again. We're gonna get out of here probably in the next ten to fifteen minutes. Um, but debate. Debate. So there was a. Um, we came up with this idea. And a lot of people would like to, for us to have a debate against, you know, anybody that wants to run. So what we want to do is in June, first weekend, first weekend in June. Uh, we got the calendar on there. Yeah, see, see what that, see what that date is. Because we, first we, weekend in June would be the fourth and the fifth. All right. So we want to have a debate with you know the candidates running for. Um, office of 623. Um, again, we, we all about doing stuff different here. We want to have a debate. We talked about it. Um, we, we talked about it. So, what's that? What's Saturday? The 5th? Uh, Saturday's the 4th. Okay, let's do it on June the 4th. June 4th. So, this is our our invitation. We're going to do it right at the, the Union Hall. Both sides, whoever or how many ever sides it is. June 4th. Um, if you really want to do it, uh, my number is 267-235-1588. Um, you can give me your number, too, if they want to. 267-339-9296. Um, we, we are looking forward to the debate June 4th. Um, um, you know, we're not trying to wait around to do it um, because if you are a true leader, you, you, you don't need no time to and talk about what you're going to do. Not only that, it's not going to be scripted. No, so no, no scripts. No. It's going to be totally live. Right. So whatever questions you have, it's going to be no scripted questions. Right. Come, ask a question, and the candidates will answer. Right. We're not, we don't want you to email. We don't want you to email questions. You, we don't want none of that. Come down to the hall. Whatever come to your mind. Hooker, man, you said A, B, and C, and D, but it didn't happen. Why? I'm going to be put in the spot. I'm going to have to tell you why, you know? Okay, okay, Eric. Yeah, but still, man, listen. Um, we want this to happen. Um, don't don't chicken out. 
Don't say you're not going to debate. Don't do this. Uh, I think it's very, very important that the members hear plan, vision. Um, I, I want to hear because I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a member. I want to vote because just in case if something happened and we and you know we we don't win, then I want to be able to hold you accountable for whatever things that you're saying. Um, you know, and that's the, and that's what this is about. This 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 debate is about accountability. That's what this is about. How can we hold you accountable if you don't even come and face the membership? And also, if it's like if you're running for a certain position, tell me why. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I want because Alex, I want to vote. I, I want to know why. I want to know why. I want to know. Members want to know. We all would like to know. So again, June the fourth, Saturday, June fourth, we'll do it uh, eleven o'clock. Um, please come on out. If you accept, if you accept the challenge, not the challenge. Because this is not invitation. You're right. This is not us versus you. This is this is us fighting the company, right? But we do have to have a democratic political process. The way you look at it is, no matter who wins, we all on the same side. At on the, the same over. time, right? Absolutely. So again, um, June fourth, eleven o'clock. Call one of my myself, Bagby. Um, we'll be at the union hall waiting on you. If you don't show up then that's on you. The members will definitely be paying attention. Um, we're looking forward to it. It's not going to be scripted. Members come in, ask you questions. You know, uh, listen, I, I'm looking forward to it, man. I, I'm, 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 I'm actually psyched about it. <laughs> I wish we could do it tomorrow. You know, and the thing is, I'm psyched about it, not because it's a debate, because I'm psyched about it. I want to hear what the members say, because right. I, I want to keep moving forward. Absolutely. Because, so, again, we're not perfect. There's some things I'm quite sure that we haven't done, right? We're not perfect. There's some mistakes that we've made, right? And we don't want to make them anymore. And I want to hear from the members on what they are and where we can improve if they decide to keep us here. And you know, it's easy to hear some good. Hooker, you're doing a great job. Yeah. Bang on. It, that's easy. Right. So, of course, you love to hear that, but yeah. I would rather hear yeah. what I'm not doing, doing so I can improve on it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, June 4th, Union Hall. <coughs> Come on out. That's debate, not debate. Let's just have a discussion about certain things, and we'll talk about you know what we've been doing over the last two plus years, and we'll hear what you guys been doing over the two last two plus years. We'll talk about your your vision and the plan, and how you see um, the membership growing, how you plan on making it grow. You know, just things like that, man. I'm looking forward to it. June fourth, we'll put it out there after the show. We'll blast it everywhere. Um, again. If you're worried about um, campaign um, uh, infractions, whatever, I'm opening up to, to to every side. This is not just come here, Richard Hooker, Bagby, Kamak, Romeo, Tiny. Um, this is come out and hear everybody that's running. You know, whatever side you want. <clears throat> June the fourth. Uh, please come on out. Please come on out. <laughs> please come out. Um, but all in all, man, this has been a good show. We're going to be back out there campaigning again tonight. And the rain trying to, you know, they try to throw a monkey wrench, but we was able to go in. I was, I was at Oregon Avenue, Bag was at PHL. Uh, we're going to be out there again tonight, man. And, and thanks to everybody this morning taking our literature, buying tickets for our raffle, our TV, a 55-inch um, uh, UHD 4K TV. Um, thank you guys for, for doing that. We appreciate it. Hey, hey, man, I'm still waiting for that question, man. I'm going here real quick. Man, you said you got a question. I haven't I haven't seen it yet, man. Well, I definitely expect to see A down on June. Yeah, yeah. man. Hey, you got to come, man. Matter of fact, hey, how about you be the moderator, hey? That's even better. You, mean, you be the moderator. Keep you man, you keep peace, make sure that the questions are answered correctly. Keep everything in line, hey. And know? again, it's not us against them. No. It's the Show your vision to the membership. Right, that's Give it. the membership an uh, uh, in, uh, insight on what cool. you're Cool, my man. I appreciate that, but I'm still waiting for that question, eh? Hey, real quick, we got about we got about another ten minutes, ten fifteen minutes, man. Oh, do we have a director of operations? What's his question? All right, so the, our director of operations is Dustin Dino Guastado. We talked about that earlier, and I keep messing up his name. I know you're gonna bust me up, but. Um, I guess that's my southern accent. Man, yeah. You know what I mean? But so what he does, Abe, is this. He does a lot of things. So for an example, 
when I first, when we first got won the election, but not in the hall, I had two weeks to come down to the hall to kind of learn everything, read over some stuff. After talking to Trish, because she was buried in a lot of work, she told me that she needed some help. So that's what we did. We went out and got another a union um, organizer. He makes about seventy thousand dollars. A seventy thousand. Look at the LM two. It's about seventy thousand dollars. It was sixty nine. Sixty nine. So, yeah, sixty nine. Sixty nine. But I say seven. I'm rounding up to seventy. Um, what he does is he does a lot of helping her out, and he helps the entire e board out. So, for an example, you know, instead of Trish doing all the Titan stuff, answering the phones, getting the um, um, something like uh, when people call for the legal services, he takes that off of her as well. For an example, we can call him right now and say, hey, man, we need a, a discipline history on member X. He can plug it in, type it up, boom. Member X has this discipline. The last thing he got was this date here, right? The stuff you see on the website, um, Dino. Uh, the flyers that you see about membership meetings, uh, a lot of our stuff that you see about um, when we have our 623 day, all that kind of stuff, um, Dino. Um, a lot of the pol political stuff that, they got, that I got to get involved in, he helps coordinate that. So, again, director, um, he, he, he does a great, great, great job for us. Great, great you job. You ask any of the BAs, he's essential to what we do. But, again, I gave this I gave, I gave this declaration earlier, too, though, Abe, if you want to do it. You don't have to believe us. Call 215-289-0580 and talk to Trish about it. Oh, James Hughes, you're right. The app right. is Dino. Right, the app. The app, right. So the 63 app that we have, he, he puts that information in out there together. So, again, you don't have to take our word for it. Just call the union hall, talk to Trish. She can tell you better than what we can ever tell you. All right? So that's that's what he does. And I know he gets put out there a lot, you know, his 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 political background and this, this, this. Dude, I don't care nothing about that stuff, man. I don't care if you're Republican, Democrat, Socialist, DSA. I don't care what religious background you come from. I don't care what color you are. I don't care your gender. All I know is and care about is when it comes time to go to war against the employer, will you be there? Will you show up? These guys will show up. You know, so, and that's all they care about. And even some this is calling the hall. Yeah. In 2019, it was so many issues with the, the phone not being answered. Yeah. You're not going to have this issue now. It's the phone was answered all the time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, again, uh, June the 4th. A month from today, we're gonna to have this this debate. Um, listen, um, no, not for, debate. Yeah, not debate. Be. I keep wanting to say that, man. I, I apologize. This is just a discussion on um, the candidates running for leadership of six two three, their vision and plan on how we will fight the company. That's 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 yeah. all right. Cool, cool, cool. That's what we're gonna be doing. Um, I hope you guys come on out there. Um, listen, be, be, just come out there, you know, um, there's a lot of things that we're doing again behind the scenes as far as, as we talked about earlier, we're getting new members in, um, we had a group drop off the cars, they signed off, uh, on Monday, um, we're ready to rock and roll with them. We just organized, um, the, the customer counter clerks, um, into our collective bargaining agreement. So we're doing the work and we're going to continue to do the work. And all we ask you guys to do um, is vote for 623 Lives Matter Sleep. Um, I can go over the, 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 the amount of grievances we won. I can go over the big New, York, the New Year's Eve grievances that we won. The website, the union hall. And I'm going to tell you something about that union hall. Every other weekend is making... It's making the, the union money. I'm telling you. So it's it's growing. Um we got our new champ of the six two three uh uh Madden tournament on Moto Murph. What up, what up, what up, what up, what up Murph? Um and, and that's what we that's what we're trying to do. Create create more spaces for everybody to get more engaged in. The generation six two three committee. 
We got, like you said in the beginning, we got people who never came out to the union hall coming out to these things. You, you know what I mean? You got long time members starting to come back out to the union meetings because we, this is what this is about. We're not going to beat UPS divided. We're not, he says, <laughs> champions here. We're not going to beat anybody divided. Whatever your political views of me, listen, I, I don't know what to tell you. I'm, I'm not. I'm not going to go along with the get along. I'm not bowing down and kissing nobody ring. Um, that's not how we got here. Um, it's just it's not it. Not it. Now, if I agree with you, I'm with you. If I if I don't, then I don't. But that shouldn't stop us from moving forward, fighting the company. No. It shouldn't. Um, and so, you know, we're going to continue to do the work. We're going to continue to to fight for our members. We're going to continue to build these spaces. We're going to continue to be informative. We're going to continue to be uh, transparent. We're going to continue to be in the buildings. We're going to continue to win grievances. We're going to continue to win that panel. We're going to continue to do the job. We're going to continue to be us. That's us. That's, that's what we do. That's perfect. That's perfect. We're going to continue to be us. That should be on our next flyer. Yeah. We're right. going to continue to be us. Yeah, we ain't going to be no different. That's right. going to be us. But that's how we got here. And again, we thank you guys for taking the chance because as much praise as we get for being the first this and the first that that would not be um available it would not have happened if it wasn't for you guys taking that chance so i give you guys just uh you know a hand clap of praise what we call it in church um just for taking that chance on us and i hope we have um for our first time i hope we have been doing you guys proud. The best is yet to come. Um, we, we got more and more ideas coming. Um, be on the lookout for our, our proposal campaign. And if you are a driver right now, um, the 9 5 campaign is going on. I was with um, uh, Ron Kamak and Keith Roberts. Shout out to Keith Roberts for stepping up over there, getting some of those things signed for us for the 9 5 list. Listen, it is very, very important that people sign the 9 5 list, man. Let's get on that list. Get on that list. Get on that list. Make sure you sign that list, man, because it is very, very important. Um, shout out to all of my BAs, my, my 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 number one road dog here, man. We've been through this thing long, long time. It started off with two hoodies and twelve, 12 shirts. shirts. Hey, he got the one of the hoodies on there. I got, I got one of them on now, that. man. I kept it, man. I uh, so um, we're gonna continue to build off this thing. He got one of the new shirts on, but. It was kind of cold, man. I'm, you guys, I'm from the south, man. My bones, man. My bones still haven't got acclimated to this northern weather yet, man. Any, any, anything below like fifty and stuff, I'm in a bad way, man. And I'm in a bad way. But uh, we appreciate you guys, and I just want to just spend these last few minutes just telling you guys thank you, thank you, thank you, because you didn't have to vote for us. You didn't have to give us a chance. We could have just been going down the same stagnant road as before, but you took a chance on us, and we appreciate it. Um, I, uh, I'm thankful and grateful because, you know, um, you didn't have to do it. You know, I know a lot of people trusted the previous administration, and to, to, to gain that trust from you guys that you had from the previous guys, that was no small task. It took a lot of courage on behalf of our members. I, I think I think it did. I, I really think it did. And we appreciate it, man. And we thank you. God bless you guys. We love you. Um, I wish I could give everybody a big hug. Say thanks again, ma'am. And again, Friday, uh, our Women's Caucus will be out giving our roses to our mothers. Appreciate all the mothers. Thank you guys for all that you have done. Shout out. I want to give a special shout out to Monica Murchison. Because uh, May is Lupus Awareness Month. A lot of you Members may not know that my mother died and passed away from lupus back in 1984. Um, she was 29 years old. I never really got a chance to know my mother. Um, but Monica Merchinson, she has lupus. And she's one of our 623 members, man. So big shout out to her. Um, and I, I've watched her go through some things with lupus. And she still continues to show up for work. And works hard. And works hard. That's just the determination of a mother. A determination of a teamster right there miss monica is the is the is really a, the definition of motherhood and teamster 
while going through lupus. All the all the stuff that she goes through, day in and day out, man. You know, and and we watched her. We watched the lupus attack her, and she still comes to work. She still works hard. And shout out to her. God bless her, man. And hang in there, sis. We praying for you. Um, and all of our members that have may have lost loved ones throughout this year. Um, you know, we lost some good people, man. Uh, Carl Harper, you know, long time member. Uh, we lost other members, man. But his his name just came right to me. A lot of our members lost Colleen Byers. She lost, I believe, her mother. Um, you know, we it, it's just it's just a shame. COVID has took a lot from our membership, as far as our family and lo and loved ones. But hang in there. Um, we can, we can we can be your family if you want us to. You know, we don't we don't have no problem with that, man. But just just hang in there together. Let's fight the company together. Let's continue to win together. And again, um, don't don't pay attention to the negativity. Don't pay attention to the negativity. Any questions you have, you have our cell phone numbers. You can call us, you see us, and we can talk about it. Had a conversation with a member yesterday at PHL, some stuff that they were seeing, it, and they just did not like what they saw. And I said, hey, brother, you know, don't worry about that because when you see us in the building, we're not here to address what they're saying. Well, we're here to address the company when a misguided is misguided they're going to always be misguided, misguided yeah <laughs> and again we don't we don't and we're not and, and and i gotta say this we're not going to disparage anybody from running against us that's not what it's about this is a democratic process we believe in democracy we we believe in um using your voice um but but we also believe that come november um, it's going to be a last slide victory. It's not even going to be close. Um, we're going to still be here, um, not being cocky and arrogant, but again, our work will speak for itself. Um, this is just the way it's going to be. And again, and it's not going to be because we are so special and we are great. It's because um, our members see the work, they appreciate the work, and they're going to want the work to continue and to, and to be better. And it will be. And it will be. And we appreciate you guys. So, again, if you guys want to be on our next flyer, um, send us a picture um, with a quote. Uh, we got a new batch getting ready to come out. Um, again, shout out to Tom, uh, Tom Shake Schweizer. Shout out to Anthony Savillo. Um, to my man, Big Red, Steve Donnelly, Joe Makovsky, um, Eric, not Eric, uh, Eddie Brooks. Um, shout out to, to, to everybody, man, that um, that had just given us this opportunity. Miss Taryn, Miss Carolyn, I mean, down at Greyhound. Um, thank you guys for, for really, really um, putting yourself out there to be, to tell everybody why we should stay supporting the 623 Lives Matter group. And we appreciate you guys. We thank you guys. We're going to keep this train rocking and rolling. Um, but I want to say this before we get off the air. Something that Ron Carey said before the um, the UPS contract in 1997. Um, because, again, we're going to win this next election. And what I would say is this. Either get in line or the line will be made for you. It's just that simple. Because we're going to keep pushing. And we're going to keep growing the local. We're going to keep winning for our members. And we're going to keep standing up for what's right. And we're going to be unapologetic about all of it. All right? So, what you got, big man, before we get out of here? My thing is this. I really appreciate you guys trusting us in this position. And because y'all took that chance on us, it's our duty and it's our responsibility to take that trust and do right by you guys. I mean, fight hard for you guys. And I believe that we've done that, but I've also believed that we can do more. Yeah. Absolutely. And we are going to do yeah, more. Absolutely. Because... A man who knows everything can't learn nothing. Mm -hmm. So nobody knows everything, and there's always room for improvement. So as long as there's a company, there's always going to be us. We're always going to fight hard for everything that we got. And we definitely appreciate you guys, and we love you guys. All right. So, again, we're going to see you guys later on. We're going to be outside uh, with the flyers inside of the cafeteria areas. Um, if, if you got some loose change on, you want to buy some tickets for the 55-inch um uh uhd 4k tv we're going to have the tickets on us um we're going to announce it live on air who who wins 
Listen, guys, we need everybody to make sure you donate. All right, it's just that simple. Donate to the campaign. The link, the links will be up later on in the show. Also, buy some tickets um, because we we just don't want to win. We want to send a strong message, not to the people running, but to to Jeff Bezos, Kara Tomei, her crew, the Walton family. We want we want them to know that the six two three members are ready to fight. And these are the leaders who we trust and have confidence in that will fight for us. All right? We're going to get out of here. God bless. Don't forget, Friday, Women's Caucus is going to be out there giving out flowers. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers who are going to be watching this show. Shout out to um, everybody who supported us and who didn't support us. We love you just the same. And still we on the same side. Still on the same side. All right? Don't forget, one union, one family. And make sure when you get your ballot, you vote for 623 Lives Matter. All right. Peace out. God bless. We love you.